Welcome back to the Whatnots Reactor Core number 115. We have our big spoiler cast for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 uh, right here, right now. We're excited. It's been a long time coming. It feels like we've had like yes. a whole decade of, of the G -G Guardians. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're we excited to get to that indeed. We nearly have. First movie came out August 2014. So nearly. Wow nine years uh in the making six of those years spent waiting for volume three for sure for sure uh my name is kyle springer i am joined by melissa wilkinson melissa how Hello. are you <laughs> thank you for asking about me with great sympathy we know that this <laughs> is my very favorite film franchise guardians 2 specifically perhaps my favorite film of my adult life so this was a, a monumental day for, for me and my best friend, Jack. We had a, a whole day planned to run going to see this. Very ceremonial. Yeah, yeah you, you took the day off of work. You went out to eat yeah. afterwards. You did a whole thing. Um, Before Martin and was... afterwards, we planned everything like very specifically. <laughs> Good. That's, that's so much fun. My mind was not as eventful as, as that, but I went as soon as I could the opening night, Thursday evening, seven 30. Mm. Um, Ooh. and it was, it was a pretty full theater, uh, except the first two rows, which yeah. uh, are, is like too close up to, I mean, we have those like big recliners, hates and, and stuff like that, that rec recline and, uh, heat up and do all that stuff. But even still, it's just, it's just like, you can lean back, but it's still almost like too big, um, yes. to, to sit there. But, um, yeah, I, I went as soon as I could. I had a, bl a blast, uh, so I think what we will do is kind of talk about our spoiler free thoughts on the movie, uh, stuff like that. And then uh, we will have a clear distinction when spoilers will be happening, uh, which will be right after our little housekeeping break. Um, so, yeah, Melissa, let's start with you. You, you are, are already had that G Guardians is your favorite Mm -hmm. franchise of the mcu the second one be being just like a monumental film yes. in your life how did this third one wrap things up this movie really surprised me this did not go the way i thought it was going to go it definitely feels like a finale there's something just mm -hmm. seeped into like the the pacing of it the way it's lit, the color temperature of the thing that tells you this is the final one. This is the last chapter. So yeah. it's tonally very different. Not very different, but, but there is a noticeable difference between these and the other two. It's not quite as fun, but I think that is what we were expecting going in. That part didn't surprise me. I knew I was going to cry a lot and I did cry a lot, but it was not. It was not an emotional experience in the way that I was expecting it to be an emotional experience. It still was just different. Interesting. There's stuff that this movie pulled off that really astounded me. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know. So you use the, the word not as fun, but I think I want to preface that with it's still really fun. I oh, loved yes. this. Yes. <laughs> but I, I think you're, you're right. There is this sense of. Like everything has come full circle. We're here yes. at the end. This is a finale. This is the grand send off, um, which which has more of a somber feel to it. Um, there there's there's tons of emotional moments. I definitely teared up uh, by the end of, of this. My my pa pa partner was crying from the very first scene to the yeah. end, like nonstop. Yeah. Just like there's there's so much there's, stuff happening that is emotional. There's a lot all the time um and yeah i i loved it i had a blast with this i think this is up there as one of the better marvel films yes. period yes um I, I know going into this i was seeing some people on twitter being like this is the, the best marvel film we've gotten since and game and mm. yeah, like i said it's one of the best ones that we've we've gotten yes period. absolutely um, and I, I, I think this, this 
I, I mean, we've, we've already known that Guardians were good movies, but I think this solidifies <laughs> the trilogy as yes. maybe one of, if not the best trilogy in the MCU. Um, in anything. As, it's, it's so consistent and... Yeah, just really gives you everything you need right there at the end. It carries through on things that you know you like you could see coming. Like the the thing that made me cry the hardest is like the most obvious thing that the final movie in this trilogy would do. But another thing was something that quietly has been there the whole time that you never think of. Oh, right. Th- that should happen. That should be how this story wraps up. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah, I um like I yeah, one of the best tr- trilogies in the MCU. I, I know for me personally, I'm not as ha- high on the second G- G- Guardians one. I like the first one better. Um, but yeah, I man, guy, oh, this is so good. Go watch it if you have not yet. Yes. Go watch it. Um, because it was it was a blast. Um, I, I think top level like plot beat stuff there's there's really kind of only two plot lines go going on mm-hmm. in 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 this it's rocket's stro story and his back stro story and then there is the story of peter uh kind of coming to terms with the loss of gamora yes. uh and what that means for him going forward what that means for the team and so on and so forth um there and i i will say we do get a a bit of a look into the f- the future of what is happening in mm-hmm. in the cosmic side of of marvel um at, at least in in terms of the guardians themselves um cuz even though this trilogy is done james gunn is kind of done with the guardians i don't know if that necessarily means that uh like the guardians of the galaxy are done. No, uh, I, that's all I will say on that. Yeah. You can very easily imagine seeing most of these characters again in a secret wars. Like, I feel like a lot yes, of characters yeah. are being shelved until secret wars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when they all c- c- come back and they do the on your left again, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> still on your left. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I, I I had a blast at this. There are two post credit scenes if you are mm. interested in in that. Um, I, I didn't feel like they were like mind blowing, like, oh, my God, this means this thing mm. and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but they they are good. They're fun to, yeah. to see. None the less some good e- e- Easter eggs uh, in those ones do you have any other kind of stuff that you want to add to like plot that, that might be a little bit relevant for spoiler free stuff going in we do go meet the high evolutionary who everybody has seen in trailers who is this genetic scientist with this real god complex who mm-hmm. who made rocket made other modified animals like rocket and uh, after Rocket gets hurt, they have to go confront him and his whole organization to get something to help heal Rocket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know if I really have much else to right. say. That's right. It's free. tricky. It's, it's so tricky good. to know yeah. what to say. Yeah. Like well, I that- walked into this knowing I knew a single song that was going to be on the soundtrack. I had heard one out of the like 17 songs that's in this mm. movie. And that was the one thing I knew I had one fact. <laughs> so I walked in knowing very little. Yeah. I like, I, I think that's the thing with this is that James Gunn did such a, a, a like a, a tight knit job with all of yes. these I hope that it doesn't really feel like this movie has a lot to do in terms of plot. It's not wrapping mm. up 50 different things. Yeah. There's, there's only a couple things and it fits so well together um, that, that I, yeah, I think by the, the end of, of this, it is a <laughs> fitting send off to the guardians. And like I said, I teared up by the end. There, there, there was not like, a specific thing that made me mm. cry 
but it was just like all of the things happening just like slowly like bringing me to all of these emotions and just like oh i love it Mm. it was good i had a blast so there you go there you go um Well, I say we take a quick break for housekeeping, uh, and then when we come back, we will dive into spoilers. So we will be right back. Here at The Whatnots, we make multiple different shows, and a lot of hard work goes into making them. So we would love it if you check them all out. If you enjoy our shows, patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to show your support. For just a dollar a month, you can get early access to episodes and at our $3 tier, a Patreon-exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club. You can even get a shout-out and thank you on most of our shows at the $5 tier. And if you're one of our patrons already, thank you so much. It means the world to us. You can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch for video versions of the shows, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something else, head over to thewhatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. All right, we are back. Uh, some more real quick housekeeping. First of all, thank you to our Patreon supporters. We thank love you. you. It means a ton. Uh, over on our Patreon exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club, uh, we are covering Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Uh, we, we watched the pilot of that and had a blast. Um, lots of Marvel stuff coming from us here at the Whatnots uh, recently because over on the review show, uh, we are about to yes. t- t- talk about the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon that is available on Disney Plus, all 26 episodes of that. Um, so, yeah, be- be- between that and Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur and Guardians 3, we got lots of Marvel stuff to talk about. Um, but right here on the Reactor Core, uh, we are continuing our coverage of Yellow Jackets Season 2 um melissa i think tomorrow we are recording our Mm. podcast on episodes five and six uh so look out for all of that stuff uh but yeah um covering the good place over on the review show over on the captain's log we got to uh i mean i had a whole duolingo debacle uh thing happening over there we got to react to the dune 2 trailer Got to talk a little bit about this Mountain Dew summer freeze. All sorts of good stuff. Um, (laughs) You have more? (laughs) You got more cans of it? Wow. I have a whole 12 pack, which I have been slowly working my way through. They nailed it. The bomb pop flavor. So Mm. go get you some. Um, But yeah, that's about it for housekeeping because I want to get into more Guardian stuff. Uh, so with that, let's get into spoilers. Bam. Okay. <sighs> well, listen, how, so how, how do we want to do this? So we, we used to do these longer yes. meteor spoiler casts where we, we would kind of do some of the broader brush strokes of what the plot was and use that as a launching pad. But then I think we've gotten into the idea of like, what if we keep them a little bit shorter and just kind of mm. dive into it, talk about what we need to, to yeah. slash want to. But I know this is also Guardians 3. I feel like this sits like <laughs> somewhere in between. Like <laughs> We don't know what this is. We um, want to talk about this in... I don't know if I want to go through it chronologically. Sure. Uh, not that I don't like. The opening is powerful. The opening is effective. But... I kind of want to go from the back first almost because the most astounding thing about this movie to me is that nobody dies. Everybody was going into this movie expecting at least somebody to die. There were so many theories about like, well, Craglin's gone because if James Gunn isn't going to be here anymore, I imagine Sean Gunn isn't going to be here anymore. Right. Yeah. These are the actors who don't want to keep being covered in, in paint and extensive makeup effects again in their career. Did, like there oh were God. all these theories about who's going to die. And the Did fact that see? everybody comes out of this alive is a miracle. 
there was a picture going around of uh, what's her name? K- Karen Gillen, who, who plays uh, mm-hmm. Nebula, who was like, so I was on set and forgot that I had scheduled couples counseling uh, on the <laughs> same day. And so it's it's it's, a, it's like a Zoom call picture of her in like her in in her oh nebula God. makeup on her like couples counseling thing and she's like i forgot <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um yeah you just reminded me with all the <laughs> makeup stuff of that but but yeah you're you're right like i, I think i went into this expecting this not only to be a wrap up of the franchise, mm-hmm. but just kind of like it, it's kind of a dice roll for who dies. Yes. Um, yes. And they all lived. Incredible. Yeah. And like for like the last year and a half or something, ever since that little quote came out where James Gunn said, this is the last time you will ever see this incarnation of the Guardians. We've all thought somebody will die. No, like it's just people choosing to go their own way or retire or Nebula's like, I'm going to be mayor of nowhere. <laughs> I'm in charge of this place now. I want a home. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I think it's a, a great way to move on from yes. characters as well as give these characters uh, more growth. Uh, and Because yes. I, I, I think once the scene at the end that stood out to me was... Um, was 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 when they're like they're basically like yeah like i've i've explored stuff because this guy told me to i've explored stuff yeah because you guys have told me to and mantis is, is the one's hey in that and, and yeah and, and, and she's just like i i kind of just want to go explore things because i want to uh um, yes and, and yeah i i i I think that was great for 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 her, and they they each have their reasons for either staying with the t- team, leading the next incarnation of the team, being around the team but not necessarily yeah. in it, or yeah, all all sorts of stuff, which I thought was fantastic. That that was yeah, like I think it, it, it was by that p- 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 part that I was like starting to tear up. I, I was like, I don't this believe is so good you for with all your... of them. I love this. I, I, you come to dad. this. <laughs> right. You come to this slightly misty eyed where I was like full physically sobbing. <laughs> yeah. No, like I, I, I think for me. So on the captain's log, one of our other podcasts, you yes. asked me what I was doing to prepare for Guardian. <laughs> yeah. To which my my answer was basically nothing like i uh-huh. I, d- I just didn't think of it like i didn't realize it was coming so soon and here it is um but i know you also like rewatched the uh, uh, other movies they were mm-hmm. in uh stuff stuff like that and i i mentioned to my partner after we watched it i was like yeah i think if i had rewatched those m- m- movies and was more immediately in that story I feel like mm. I would have cried so much more than I did. did, did. Um, but yeah, uh, it was just like I, I was so happy for everyone, but sad for everyone. Yeah. And it was just so good. I loved it. Yeah, the, the whole thing is so sincere. Like there's a mm-hmm. lot of thought put into where every character ends up, why all of them are going the way that they're going. It feels like there's a real sense of continuity to it, even though it's stuff you you've never thought about. How Mantis grew up as essentially a a pet of ego, and then she was immediately adopted into the Guardians, who love love her very much, but she never mm-hmm. has been independent, and she wants to experience that. Like she really wants to figure herself out outside of the context of people who are immediately like, uh, like feeding into her emotional reactions to things. You know, as as an empath, she. I, I it makes absolute sense that she's like I need to go off by myself for a little while. Yeah. And the fact that Peter's like she encourages Peter, don't you have family left on earth? Is there nobody left there back back there for you? And you realize the grandpa who we saw in the first movie and we see in the second movie. Like Real you briefly, never think yeah. about how 
with that appearance in the second movie when Ego's like weird plants are tearing up that Dairy Queen back in Missouri, you think, oh, is there going to be a third beat to this guy? Are we going to see the grandpa in the third one? Is Peter going to go back to the grandpa? Again, Peter's not even sure if he's still alive. And we, the audience, have not really thought about it that much either. I yeah. liked what a surprise that was. And that at the end of the day, Peter's like, I, I have been running from this trauma that happened to me when I was a kid, when my mother died right in front of me and I, I wouldn't hold her hand and my grandpa pushed me out of the room and then I was immediately abducted by aliens. A traumatic <laughs> like, event, I need to, to be sure, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but he's like, he... I need to go back. I need to confront that. You're right. I, I need that closure. I need this part of my story yeah. cleared before I really think about other things. I think what's interesting about that, too, is he also misremembers what happens yeah. with that. Yes. Like he 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 has this idea uh, uh, of it in his mind that his grandfather was like pushing him out and yelling yeah. at him and being mean. Mm. Um, whereas we, we know that that was not actually the case he like he was more concerned like wait come back yes. um yes like he he did want to like oh like yeah i don't know give his his mom some some space but um yeah, yeah to, to just like have the kid go out like running and crying and then immediately be abducted by aliens yes. right it's just this whole thing is traumatic um mm -hmm. i'm i'm kind of surprised that he did not like i i think it would have been a funny scene at the end uh, there when he returns home to to go see his his granddad and also has Mantis there and is like, this is my sister. <laughs> right. right. Um, uh, yeah, just like how strange that could have been in that whole whole uh, stuff. But I yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Mantis went out on her. Yeah. Own. They do mention that she is his sister like two, two or three times in this movie. Mm. And if you haven't seen the holiday special, you yeah. might be a little confused. I'm just like, wait, wh what? You can still do the math without yeah. having yeah. seen it, but it's not like laid out explicitly um, un unless you've you've seen the holiday special. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think Peter going back to Earth to then to have that reunion is is really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then the the like end credits uh, saying that we get with that where they're just having like a normal, like boring -ass <laughs> conversation <laughs> while eating cereal right. and reading the right. morning he's, he's paper. Eating, it's great. He's eating peanut butter flavored magic spoon. Like what a specific modern cereal for him to be eating right not not like let me go back to the like cereal of the 80s yeah, that i remember the cheerios like, i remember no what yeah. what new cereals do you guys it's, have oh they're magic, magic <laughs> like i can see him being like are are they really magic what <laughs> <laughs> now i met a wizard guy once he right. turned his head around a bunch of times and told us we had a one in 14 <laughs> chance to save the universe can the cereal do that i i mean that's why he would believe it he's like i know there are wizards on earth <laughs> like, <laughs> dr strange approved yeah. four out of five dr strange is approved magic spoon as part of a healthy <laughs> breakfast exactly another thing that really affected me about that storyline is one of the things that has made guardians my favorite for nine years now missouri missouri baby it's as somebody who's like lived in St. Louis my entire life. I have no plans on leaving. I'm not going to the other edge of the galaxy. Like to see that come full circle where that is a good, happy ending for somebody that they just go to St. Charles, Missouri. Yep. Like, <laughs> I don't it, it really, really touched me like that is especially to see it like his grandpa sitting there reading the St. Charles Post or whatever, which I don't know if that's a real newspaper. But St. Charles is a real hey. town outside of St. Louis. That's where Jack and I both went to college. I drive oh, wow. through that town all the time. Yes. And just to know that he was there, like in a place so close and so real and so important to my life experience, like really got to me and we spent the day so like jack and i went and got lunch 
we we I made a playlist. We drove around. We talked about what we wanted from the movie. We went to see the movie. We went out to dinner afterwards. We were driving around through like mm-hmm. uh, the little suburban town where we know James Gunn grew up. We've read in like interviews and stuff. Yeah. So and we're looking at all these beautiful houses and the beautiful green trees and I. To see the movie celebrate the thing I was just doing three hours earlier, just awesome. enjoying living in Missouri. I I can't tell you what that did for me. No other film series, no other film has brought this to me the way Guardians has brought this to me. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the post is their paper. I think it's the Herald or mm. something like that but I, I i i did like the easter egg on the paper too that was like alien abduction kevin bacon yes. tells all <laughs> <laughs> which was great mm. <laughs> so um good stuff with that it did at the end say star lord will return the which, legendary star lord will return again kind of we know probably gonna be in like secret wars or some avengers movie yeah. maybe he'll join up with the avengers and uh, be on their team for, 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 for a bit who knows mm. um but yeah good stuff with that i think uh, j- just to kind of round off this conversation about like where everyone ends up um yeah i think drax coming full circle to be a father is yes. A, a, yes. not like le- literally a father, but finding out that he's actually great with kids and yes. kids love him. And like, he's basically going to run the daycare on nowhere. Like he is right. now the like de facto dad of yes. nowhere. That's again, something that has been quietly like a major through line of his character. They don't mention mm-hmm. like it's a bigger part in the first movie because that's why he wants revenge on Ronan because he, he killed his wife and daughter. But the daughter comes up again in the second movie. Like it's mm-hmm. it's something that's always been there, but it hasn't been the focus really. So when you see him interact with all those kids, you're like, oh, right. This is exactly what this guy used to do. He's great at this. He just has had no opportunities since yeah. then to show us that he's great at this. And it's yeah. so smart that out of all of the characters around him, that it's Nebula, the one who grew up with Thanos, that looks at him and says, like, like she knows what a bad dad is, that she's the one who look at, looks at him and says, you were born to be a dad. I know that. I have had the experience to know what a good dad is and you are that yeah that's that's so sweet that's so effective and this is what i was talking about that like it's been set up for so long like dancing is such a like mm-hmm. a literal and metaphorical theme in the guardians and drax never dances that's what attracted him to his wife that the most rhythmic music in the universe could be playing and she would not move a muscle It is almost as if she was dead. Like, that's what attracted him to her. You could see this coming. Like, I knew the movie was going to end with dancing, and I knew they were going to get Drax to dance, of course. But still, just that catharsis of when it actually hits, when he does start dancing, so predictable. But, like, that is what made me, like, physically break down into sobs. Literal sobs. Yeah. Yeah, so good. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I liked that. Uh, I was it like w- w- with him. I they almost do a fake out where you think that's like, oh, he's gonna have some romantic interest in Mantis, and maybe they'll go off to get get together or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it seems like where they flirted with that a little bit in the second movie, they kind of cooled on it in this one. There's still some like them not not flirting uh is not no, necessarily I think the right those two have word. always had a bond and i think the second yeah. movie is about how it isn't that like they lay out the reasons why it would not be that they've got right, some yeah. other kind of bond that has always been really strong through like the 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 times they've had together through guardians 2 and the holiday special and they're together in in infinity war the whole time the, like, the one little disappointing thing is that she doesn't get she leaves before he starts dancing but maybe yeah. in her heart she can feel she feel, can feel the dance the, energy the, the, yeah right all as she walks away emotion. with her her abolisk squad 
(laughs) So funny. I love to see Mantis Queen of the Beasts. That's very great. Um, But but yeah, like that, I think in my head would have been a believable thing if you had told me that a number of years ago to be like, oh, yeah, no, I end up together. I'd been like, okay, yeah, sure. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, I think uh, Nebula kind of wanting to settle down and kind of stay away from adventure and just like i yeah. I, I i just want to be here and nowhere and take care of mm. nowhere all of the refugees that we've brought on all of the animals all of the kids all of the people like just uh, so, someone needs to be here for them and i i think she started to re- recognize that she can do that as part of a healing process um I, I I think this also speaks directly to her time with Thanos, um, who n- not only mistreated her and abused her, but then mm. also at the end of the day, like wiped out half of. Yes. Uh, of all life. And so for her to then nurture that in, in yes. a way here uh. and make sure that it springs back up is I, yeah. I, I, I think, again, just her story coming full circle. Um, yes which i loved rocket uh with his st- story we'll, we'll get into more of his backstory st- story in a bit here but i think at the end of the day when they're just like you're the leader of the guardians yes. now and they each do hit their like uh, like so- sign to be like yes you're you're, you're the one yeah, the I've, ravager I've, salute I've, 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 I've vote for rocket that that was in a hugely emotional uh beat for, for me um and yeah i think that it works out perfectly that he because that kind of the things that we get to find out from his backstory stories that is that 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 is what he wants to do he wants to be on a spaceship go adventure and just ride around with his friends and he's kind of already gotten to do that but he's now picked up new friends along the way and so he gets to continue doing that with like the next generation yeah um which i just think is so special um yeah for 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 him there i love that um i i do love that that's how it ends that peter's like i gotta go back home there's there's stuff i emotionally need to do there i need to reconnect with the last bits of my my earth terran family back there rocket this is yours this has kind yeah. of always been yours <laughs> I, I, <laughs> everybody I think agrees it's, yes it's it's interesting to see because also in the the scene where rocket is dying and he, there is that like the afterlife step yeah. into the light kind of scene there is a, a strange line in there that i don't know what it means exactly but it's the idea of like there are the hands that have been control controlling you and then there are the hands that have been controlling the hands and we don't know what that means we don't know if that's gonna be a big easter egg down the road if there's like some if if kang has been the one influencing everything or if it's the like living tribunal if it's the beyonder if it's something else who knows um Mm. but i i think this is rocket's way of trying to be those hands whether he knows it or not like he gets to be the one that influences the next generation uh who he knows will then like go on to be so he is the hands behind the hit right uh yeah that is such a lovely line about the hands that guide the hands because it can speak to actual comic book like big cosmic beings like like a celestial mm-hmm. or a one right. above yeah. all or something like that but it can just speak to the generic concept of fate of destiny of purpose of you went through bad things to get something good out of it at the end and you need to live to go experience that good thing yep and indeed um yeah i i liked his studio stu- stu- story um yeah that that was fantastic and then uh i think last but not least groot who spoke yeah at the end he spoke i he said i love you guys <laughs> i love you guys which is i i love it because it's so true to the character and also feels like a line that i'm going to hear in two weeks in fast x <laughs> like <I'm> right <laughs> <laughs> i love you guys 
holds up like right. Corona, right? <laughs> right. I, what a, what a, a great month. A great month. A great two guys. week period. What a great month for loving guys. <laughs> right. For going to see emotional Vin Diesel movies. Yeah. Wild coincidence. Truly the hands that guide the hands are, are directing yeah. the film calendar this summer. Uh, I, it didn't click with me in the theater, but I have seen videos since then that are saying that's, it's like you, he is not speaking English. He is still saying I am Groot or whatever. But now you have spent enough time with him that you understand him the same way all the other characters understand him. Yeah. That's a nice touch. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to go see this again next weekend in St. Charles, the theater in St. Charles, Peter's hometown. And cool. I look forward to seeing that moment play out again. That's awesome. Now that I know that's that's the take on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to new rock stars in their video because yes, I know that they they mentioned that one. And I think that's a great way to read that. Yeah. That scene is that. Yeah. He's not actually speaking our language, but you now can understand him. You've had this emotional connection with him for so long that you finally understand him. Um, yeah, which is it. Yeah, I, I, I think that is is great. Um, uh, and we haven't talked about Gamora yet. Oh, I, yes, yeah, absolutely. It's it is so sad what her and Peter went through. And this movie is a really interesting evolution or maybe de-evolution of what they were, because, of course, she dies. Now we have a version of her from several years in the past. They can't get back to where they left off in Infinity War, where they truly said, I love you to each other, where they really were an actual romantic couple and not just fun flirt action pals. And it's the conflict that Peter is trying to push her into. You did this once. You are capable of this. It can happen again. And she's like, I don't. Sure. Sure. But like, that's not me. I'm not there. I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. And the realization that Mantis helps him have. Mantis is so, of course, she's an empath. She's so intuitive. But I like that she's extra intuitive when it comes to her brother. That she's like, you lost your mom at an early age. I think you've kind of used women to fill an emotional hole in your life. And having this woman that you loved also die has opened up an even bigger hole. And I don't think getting back with this other timeline version of her is going to work yes but i like that as the movie goes on there's there's something of what used to be there like this is gamora from approximately the timeline of the recognize it yeah right yeah from the first movie they are they do get back to where they kind of were in the first movie and i like when she says i bet we were fun Like i like that it ends on this sort of hopeful note of this Who's who's to say this will never happen again? Maybe when the characters grow, uh, deal with some past trauma, have different experiences, maybe when they come back together, this can happen again. Yeah. And I like that when she goes, you almost think at the end of the movie that she is going to choose to continue with the Guardians to just sort of start rebuilding the team that we once had, that she is going to stay there on nowhere with them. And instead she goes back to the Ravagers it's I think it's so smart to show that when she goes back to the Ravagers, they love her. She yep. loves them. That is not just, oh, this is a way for me to like kick ass and make money and, you know, use all of my warrior skills I got from it's Thanos. It's a family and, for her. Yeah. Yes. That's also a family as much as the Guardians are like they they're all hugging her. It's like so v- clear to everybody that that is something to, like to her now that's as important as the guardians ever were to our original gamora i think that's something that has been repeated throughout this franchise that the guardians are our main family that we're following but this is a world full of other family back in the first movie you think about when they go into that prison they go into the kiln all those prisoners just like snuggle up together at night like they there are (laughs) bonds there You think about the Ravagers. They also just snuggle up in a big pile at night. Like they go to all these (laughs) other situations full of all these like ragtag, like, you know, misfit groups. And there is love there also separate of the main love we have going on within the Guardians. I 
I think that's really special that James Gunn has painted a picture of this world that doesn't just have this one group that is this outstanding example of love, but it love is quietly like really pervasive throughout the rest of the universe. Yeah. Um, I have a question that deals uh-huh. kind of with Gamora's stuff. How, how much do we know about James Gunn's influence or lack thereof of Gamora dying in Endgame and Infinity War? Because I, I, I feel like there, there is when, when uh, Star-Lord is kind of recapping all of that stuff, when, mm-hmm. they're, when they're in that elevator right like i i feel like that's kind of james gunn commenting on like well i wouldn't have done that but i i don't know how I true that is i i also saw that inferred but i don't know what the actual story is okay uh of like what how much influence he had on what happened in infinity war or if like the screenwriters, I think it was Marcus and McFeely who did that, and you know, and the Russo mm-hmm. brothers and Kevin and you know, the, the main creative team on Infinity War and Endgame, how much they did reach out to the other directors. They talked to James Gunn or to Taika or whoever about yeah. like, we're, we're going in this direction. How does that fit with your future plans for this character? Like, can we compromise on what all of our needs are? I have no idea right. how much is true, okay. but it. Ha- okay, I will cool. say it has always impressed me that when we do see the guardians in infinity war i think the peter and gamora relationship is something that is handled very well in that movie it always i always appreciated that that was one of the major emotional linchpins was the romance between those two characters and just the line where she says where she asks him like if thanos gets me you have to kill me i need you to swear i need you to swear on your mother like that's a line that really showed me these screenwriters did their homework on the guardians. Like that is one of the most important emotional cruxes of this story. And it always made me happy that they got that right. Okay. So I, I asked that because I feel like I saw an ending in this movie that didn't happen. There was Mm. something that I felt would have been, well, and, and you know, in hindsight, it is also a very obvious ending that I could see them trying to avoid just because I it feels like low hanging fruit here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we mentioned a lot of these characters coming full circle, right? There is a moment at the end of the film where Star Lord has to jump out of uh, the high yes. evolutionary spaceship, and he like does some trick to propel him towards the ship he needs to go, yeah. but he gets blocked by all this debris. And he needs to be saved, just like Gamora needed to be saved in the first movie. And so I was kind of expecting this to be the moment that Gamora Mm -hmm. turned around and was like, I've now been with you for a little bit. I've seen what we had. Like, I think there's something here. Maybe not yet, but right. Mm. Like you are worth saving and this is worth investigating. Um, And so that is kind of what i was expecting i was like that's actually Mm, kind of a nice touch for it to come full circle for her to save him instead but that's not what we got um Mm. we it was a nice use of adam warlock in that scene though you kind of forget right he's around here he's a super magical (laughs) gold being and he can do that so yeah i think that leads us to adam warlock in this I have to say, I kind of don't think the film really needed. Like, I, he was the one thing t- to me that felt extra. That, like, if they were mm. to trim this d- 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 down even further, I could see them cutting him out of this. I think the majority of the film still works without him. Mm. Um, but I think he was a fun inc- inclusion. I think he's not out of place by, it, yeah. by any means. I think he fits within the th- themes of the story that he is this creation right we now know that the high evolutionary create i forget the name of the golden people uh oh the sovereign the sovereign love the sovereign um but yeah that they were an experiment and more so in this in aesthetic experiment he was just like i think gold looks (laughs) neat right let let, let me hit the gold (laughs) button more gold spray paint please 
Um, <laughs> and and yeah, that they they are a result of that, and that Adam Warlock is also kind of a a result of uh, what we then learn is the high evolutionary trying to also kind of come up with species or stuff or, or something that looks to invention looks to uh create like right look, looks to think these unthunk thoughts is <laughs> something yeah. along the lines of what he says at one point um and adam warlock doesn't really live up to all of that stuff he's kind of a himbo right he's he's this mama's boy <laughs> he just likes this nice like furry space alien I cat think that's thing, so right? funny the, he's just the a sweet boy or whatever his name is yeah, yeah. He, he's just a sweet little boy sweet little golden boy um i <laughs> i think he's well utilized in I love when he appears when he first shows up in this movie and he's flying towards you. He's so far away. You don't even recognize him. Like you don't know what is coming towards you. You think it's like a spaceship at first. I like An that asteroid, yeah. couple sec. Yeah. That couple seconds of ambiguity we get there and he just tears up nowhere. That is an action scene like emotionally unlike stuff we've had in this series before where he is hitting them right there at home when they've just gotten this home. They haven't had like a physical space outside of the ship to call home before a place that they are building together. Like he hits them right at home. He tears through all of them. Nobody can get to him because he's designed for this. He is built for this. Mm -hmm. It's really harsh that it's, that scene like it's interesting to me because like he yeah like he is like he none of the guardians can really do much damage yeah, to him yeah but like you like you kind of mentioned the threat of this scene is not to really any one person i mean it, it the, he's mm. the, 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 there to get rocket right but he's yes. not it's not like the opening of infinity war where Thanos is walking through the ship, just killing people left and right. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. not that kind of threat. The threat is to nowhere. It seems. Mm -hmm. It's like this is a home we built. Like this is supposed to be yes. a safe space. What How do you dare do? you? Like the yeah. It, it, it like that seems to be the stuff. And then when Rocket does get hurt, it, it does have this extra level of just like oh shit like we need to do something like forget this fight like let's just go yes, do, so yes. do something else we, we need to save him um so yeah i i thought that was interesting but his character also kind of comes full yeah as he's the one that then saves uh star yeah at the end there and they they do the like finger touch creation, creation of, of adam yeah of yeah adam. But um, yes. his name is Adam, right? And he, like, <laughs> I think that is the moment that he finally gets that, like, hey, I don't have to be this killing machine. I can have a yeah. heart. I, I can care about things, which yes. I think he always did. But he, 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 like, at least that's how I read him. It's like he always, like, from ha him ha ha having you said, said its name, the blep or whatever. It, it, it I, th was. I think it's blurp. Blurp. I don't know. Um, but like <laughs> him attaching himself to that and like, yeah. like finding a connect. Like I think th this soft, gooey emotional center it has yes. always been been there, right? Um I I guess you could say he wears his heart on his sleeve and he has a heart of gold, you know what I mean? <laughs> what Ever <laughs> um, everybody does. That's something that really Well sure like clicks into me in this movie especially that the guardians more than any other group of characters like in the mcu are so vocal about we love each other like they don't put a lot of metaphor yep. on it i think that's really striking like they that's because they're always Drax wouldn't understand it so of course <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> I had a poop the other day shaped like a fish. Even my butt can do a metaphor. <laughs> no, but you think about their constant throughout this movie. Like, I think Nebula's like, why do you keep Drax around? He's just a liability. And Mantis says, he makes us laugh and he loves us. Like, of <laughs> course, he's not a liability. He's part of the family. Like, 
throughout this it, more and more as the series goes on, like they they say, I, I love you. They like they hug each other. They're together. They like so clearly are a family. They so clearly call each other like best friends. Like there's there it's so clear in a way that it isn't for other bonds. I think about how like <laughs> Steve and Bucky never say, I love you. You know, the way like the guardians do to each other. They've got their metaphors, their winks. There's how can I? You're taking all the stupid with you. And the guardians have like moved past that. They're like, I love you guys. I don't need to dress it up. I can just say that. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not scared to be that vulnerable. Yeah. Um, well, so, so so what I was tr- tr- trying to get, get, get at with uh Adam Warlock yes. it w- is 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 that I, I think that stuff has always been like I think the sovereign is a a people a species that like that stuff has been not bred out of them but like they've been mm. told not to have that or made not yeah. to have that and I think he does he has that in him we we do know that he was taken out of his cocoon a little pr- prematurely maybe that's why yes um but it was always there under the surface and he sees this team that yeah like you said just without a f- 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 filter loves one another and he's like what why can't i be like that um, yeah and I, I i i think that is his his moment when he sees peter out there he's like I can do something about these, like about, yes. about, about this. I can save him. I can heal him. I can do all of that stuff. And so, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a great moment for for him that it worked out. Even if if in the wild case that James Gunn was like, I was never g- g- gonna kill G- Gamora. How dare you? Um, mm. and, and, and but I think he found a way to make it work. Uh, that yeah, I think is effective. That is just as effective, if not more so, because then he gets to expand to the team. Right. Uh, yeah. I There's so much thematic density in this movie. Like there's so many echoes and parallels, like everything seems just really well thought out in that Adam is a character who is defying what he was built for the same way almost all the all the other characters are. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, Peter is a hero. He doesn't want to be like his dad and just like eat up a bunch of planets like Gamora Nebula defied Thanos. Drax isn't a destroyer. He's a dad. Mantis left ego. Rocket is this hero now. Everything except for Groot. Groot, who's still largely a mystery. Like we've got this series of characters who are like, you built me to destroy. No, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. And I like that Adam is just another one in the line of of doing that or even down to like cosmo who's like they sent me up here knowing i would die look i'm still alive i Mm -hmm. persist i live i have friends i help people yeah yeah um yeah uh, lots of good stuff with that i say we get back to rocket since he is the, the 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 main plot of this uh this stuff his backstory with the high evolutionary um so, yeah, we get to know Rocket's backstory, something that he has not talked about, period. Um, there, there's been allusions to it. Mm. We know that he was experimented on. He was ripped apart, put back together, ripped apart, put back together. But that's kind of it. That's all we've known. Um, and at the 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 start of of this, yeah, we get the scene of all these little baby raccoons in this cage Ugh. and the high evolutionary reaching in to grab one of them. And we know that that's how it starts. Um, and then, yeah, we get this scene on nowhere where uh, Adam Warlock is sent uh, to go pick up Rocket and bring him back to the high evolutionary that goes spectacularly wrong, but as a result, Rocket is hurt um, and hurt in a way that the Guardians can't do anything. Um, yes, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. And so they they have to devise a plan to be like, OK, we we need to figure out basically who and what and why Rocket is here. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, and th- that leads them to a company which it, I, it's like or, or, Ortho Corp or um, Orgo Corp 
Orgo Corp. Um, and man, that that planet was was disgusting and wild, and I loved it. It, and it was great. I, I, <laughs> truly unique. Did we had Ego the Living Planet, but not like this. To have this entirely yes. biological like flesh planet, Fleshy, <laughs> real striking. Pussy. Yeah, yeah. I I like that whole set piece of Orgo Corp. I like oh, the yeah. practicality of it. I love the colors. Like, there's something about this movie is so much visually darker than the other ones have been. Like you think this is one of the reasons why number two is my favorite. It's so vivid. It's so colorful and saturated. And this one has got, they're spending more time in like ships in structures and less time just like on the surface of a planet than they were in the first two movies. And I think that lends the movie to darker color palettes, more shadows, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or even when they get, to, I like, love the, I love the way Orgo Earth. Corp looks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even, even when, when yeah. you get to ca- 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 counter Earth, it is like a, a bland version of Earth. Yeah. Like, it's not muted, but it just it, it it's really, overcast. Yeah. Um, which is an, an interesting thing. But yeah, the Orgo Corp set re- really reminded me of something from like the fifth yes. element. Um, yeah. Especially in the bits where it is that like sleek, plasticky, white sci fi yes. stuff. Because there, there is in that, there is also the like real dirty, grimy, lived in yeah. sci fi stuff. Um, but man, yeah, that that whole set was just it, it, it's just so imaginative and fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that it's, it's just it's just neat to see on screen. It's like this is a blockbuster movie. Like this is one yeah. of the most like <laughs> mainstream popular yeah. <laughs> movies. And it's this. And this is right. Awesome. Where it's a flesh planet. And then you go inside and it's like a 1970s color scheme office. <laughs> white and orange and yellow yeah yeah <laughs> Take that, yeah tva right um, <laughs> yeah man um so so yeah the guardians are looking for more information on rocket uh they n- know that he has this uh like device on his heart which stops them from mm-hmm. from operating or doing really anything to save him um and they have to find a specific piece of code to unlock it um, mm-hmm. And that leads them to the high evolutionary. The whole time uh, Rocket in present day is basically just knocked out on this table. Yeah. He's in this like, uh, d- yeah, like uh, d- he's not in a coma, I would say, but he's he's in rough shape here. Yes. Um, and he keeps getting these flashbacks to his origin story of what was happening to him uh, when he was in the high evolutionary's custody. I don't really want to say care. Um, But yeah, experimented on put in cages. Uh, We get to see Lila, uh, who I think has been mentioned in previous movies. Um, But we, we we haven't gotten to see, see her. And yeah, they are these like Sid from toy story creations of live animals and mechanical parts. I didn't even know it at first, but it was the new rock stars of video that tipped me off that, uh, tapes, the walrus can't even blink on his own. Like he has mechanical parts that like help him blink. What's holy. What is this for? Yeah. Herbert. Why? God. Um, (laughs) yeah like just these horrific creations but you can just tell that they are just the most cutest lovable like souls on on the inside here and you immediately just fall in love with them which just makes it even more emotional because people don't like violence or cruelty against animals which i i don't want to say there's none of in this. There obviously mm. is with the, all of these experiments and you kind of see the mm. aftermath, but you don't see the physical act of it on yes. any of these animals, um, which I, I think was a good thing. But I I, mm. I I think it's still very effective in yeah. not only making you care about them, but when they do die. Uh, right. You're just like, oh, my heart. <laughs> like, oh, no. Right. I this. 
the movie uh, okay the main timeline we're in less i mean emotionally effective but in like a sweet heartwarming cathartic way not as sad as i was expecting all the sadness packed into these flashbacks the fact that the first word rocket ever says is hurts yeah. what a choice ow God. ow indeed it hurts my heart <laughs> um, i do you remember the episode of pokemon where meowth flashes back and tells you why he can talk vaguely i know I, i've it's, seen it but it's been decades <laughs> it's it's one of my favorites i have watched it several times uh big team rocket fan over also here. Sh- i i i'm gonna say did that voice actor uh, did he retire or did he pa- pa- pass away i heard something uh, re- uh, recently i don't remember if it was just he's retiring he, because of throat cancer or oh she, away she died some she died a while ago like i don't know like 10 plus Maybe years ago or something i haven't kept up because the... this was something recent that they, they oh just yeah stopped, i don't know i don't know um, or, or or pass away all right continue please but, but you see that me like how and why Meowth like trained himself to talk. It isn't a case like this where like anybody experimented on him. He just saw humans talking and he's like, I want to do that. Why can I only say my own name as a Pokemon? Can I get past that? And he like trains himself to speak. And the he's got like an alphabet book with like a little picture of something for every letter of the alphabet. And the first word he can clearly pronounce on his own is Rocket. And that's why he joins Team Rocket. Mm -hmm. so this took me like right back there and i think this is another reason why i love these movies so much i feel like team rocket was a primer for for me really enjoying rocket raccoon and the rest of the guardians just needed to share that that this thing like really hit a memory of mine from when i was like nine years old interesting yeah we we do get to see rocket as he kind of quickly grows up there is a scene when he's sitting in the high evolutionary's lap they're reading a book but then they get to look out like on counter earth and see the sky and the city skyline and he's just like wow like this is beautiful um and he he sees a rocket in the sky he's just like what's that um and that is the thing that like captures his 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 attention he, he's inspired by he's like i want to be that i, I want to do yes. that i want to go on yes, that yes um and and that is where he he takes his his name he was like you know when we get out of here and we go to to counter earth like we're not just going to be like p eight five three yeah. eight one seven five three eight nine or whatever it is yeah um and, and he, he like he was like we need to c- come up with names and that's when you get lila and teefs and i don't remember oh floor, floor. uh because he's laying, laying on, the floor. on the floor and it's like i'll call myself floor <laughs> yeah uh it's... and then rocket says i i want to be called rocket um and <sighs> and yeah just an, another emotional moment of, of 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 just like oh that's how it, like he's he like yeah he's inspired he's looking to greener pa- yes, pa- pastures yes. he's he he's dreaming and i don't think the high evolutionary realized it yet is the mm-hmm. thing and very soon finds out when he introduces rocket to like what his experiments are and what he's hoping to do. Like he's hoping to populate counter earth with all of these creatures so that he can basically play God and all mm. of the stuff, make this perfect society. Um, and he's trying to rapidly evolve a number of different creatures to populate that, that planet. Yeah. But something is going wrong and all of these cr- creatures that he's uh, evolving turn violent. And mm. basically, immediately, Rocket is like, oh, well, you got the flux capacitor all wrong. <laughs> yeah. The filter here, there, but, you know, he like he just kind of instinctively knows this stuff. Yeah. And everyone is kind of shocked and taken back of just like, how did you know this? Like, this isn't something you're programmed to know. Like, we we haven't programmed you with, like, invention yet of, of yeah. like, thinking, like, like problem solving yet. You you are just kind of a, 
data bank of info, right? You're not yeah. making connections, but you've made connections. Yes. Um, and I, I think that is where the crux of this story begins is that now the high evolutionary wants rocket's brain to study and to be like what mm. about him can i copy or manipulate to then put into yeah. uh, these uh, uh, other species to help them also invent to help them not be violent and problem solve and do all of the stuff um and as as we learned, Rocket is, is, is escapes, and that's why he wants him back because mm-hmm, he's like, I, mm-hmm. I still have never been able to crack yes. this exactly. Like I've pop, like they, they've become docile, but that's just kind of it. Like, yeah, which is I don't know a really nice narrative mirror to like Ego's relationship with Peter. Like I tried this thousands of times. I don't know why, but you're the one time it really worked. I need you. Yeah. Again, yeah. this series is so good at echoing itself in a really smart way. And also I, going so back to one mm, real quick thing on that, like r- thematically repeating itself yeah. ha- here. I uh, have been going through the Star Wars Clone Wars cartoon mm-hmm. and um I've been listening to a podcast called A More Civilized Age, which I highly recommend. Mm. Uh, it is a great com- companion podcast, super smart uh, criticism and stuff. And one of the things that they mention in that is George Lucas, when he was making some of these Star Wars movies, wanted things to what he called rhyme. Is that yes. he, he wanted this yes. like thematic e- e- echo, which is exactly what this is here. It is a rhyme scheme, so to speak, yes. in, in the movie, which I love. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But uh, going back to volume two, when Peter is fighting Ego and he has these flashbacks to all the things he's done mm-hmm. with his friends that make him want to like, break out of the magic and like fight back you it's it's like flashbacks of things we have seen even if it's like sort of alternate footage like him dancing with gamora and like laughing with drax and stuff but then there's a shot of him just flying around with rocket that we've never seen before we have no context for it's almost laughable that it's such a, a thing we have like no uh it's such a non sequitur and then you watch this movie where Rocket's like, I want to go flying with my friends. And you've got Peter repeatedly mm. referring to him as he's my best friend that contextualizes that one odd moment in a way you like never expected. Again, we don't know like when and why that was, but emotionally, that one little bit makes so much more sense now. I'm happy that we got to call yep. back to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um and yeah, it, it, it eventually Rocket figures out they're never gonna make it to Counter Earth. Mm. Uh, he's he's told as 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 much. Um, and then yeah, that's when he's like, we need to get, get out of here. You you do see him like stealing a battery at one point, yeah. and they don't mention it. Classic you don't Rocket. like r- right? Yeah, you you now know that like he's always also kind of had that instinct in him. He is kind of a klepto, right? He's, he's mm-hmm. just t- t- taking things constantly. But like, I think that I wonder if there's also like a deeper emotional meaning behind that. Like I, mm. I wonder if rocket saw this coming from a, like mm. very early on. Mm. Uh, like maybe never had it confirmed or anything like that maybe thought that he could like once he got to counter earth that would be his Mm -hmm. his chance to escape all of this which is also maybe why he you know is interested in like that thing is flying like how can i use that to get out of here right um but I, i i i yeah i like seeing him once he realizes that he's not like he's basically about to be killed he's like all right let me make this key card he just starts he ha- he has all these little things like tucked away and h- hidden and stored away which i guess is what raccoons do also too right sure uh, sure little thieves um, little yeah. robbers there you go um and yeah he makes this like makeshift 
like this universal skeleton key for all of the locks mm. on the high evolutionary ship for all, all the locks of the cages of these animals. Um, and that's when he tries to escape. He screws up the high evolutionary's face, which is a, a big r- reveal down the down the road when the, the skin the, they peel off his skin, making it literally a face off. That Peter right. always thought it it was gonna. It's not a trap. It's a face off. <laughs> I I did not realize that while watching the movie because I just kept thinking about the movie Face Off. Right. Same I'm like, here. Same here. <laughs> I'm like, wait. I don't. I think that came out in like '97. I don't think like, Peter like, would have had a way to see to Face to Off. Here, right. Like, right. is 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 <laughs> one of the high evolutionaries like helpers like secretly someone else that like mm. I, is is it Sylvester Stallone gonna have some face thing and be like hey it's me what do you, what do you I, think Ravages i've been john travolta been here, the know? entire time <laughs> right yeah i <laughs> I, I do want to say just briefly going off of that face-off moment i like that this movie showed off more than the other ones james gunn started out as a horror director you yes. could see the bits of horror in here i love whenever a movie is able to do that we've been on a good streak of doing that lately like Multiverse of Madness was so gnarly. You've even got in Wakanda mm-hmm. Forever those really eerie scenes where the Tolokan army goes and like siren sings those people to just walk off the boat yeah. in the dead of night. Freaky, We've got a nice quiet little streak of like horror threads in the MCU right now. I like it. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Um, and yeah, and in in the in all of that that stuff all of rockets friends get shot and killed um and it's just it's heart breaking and yeah he he has to escape by himself without any of his mm-hmm. friends we I, I i don't think maybe they explained it in the first movie and i don't remember but we, we don't mm. get to see really anything past that so we don't really see how yeah. he met up with groot or anything still a mystery like that yeah um, but yeah, that is basically Rocket's backstory. Um, and so it, him kind of returning to the high evolutionary and being on the ship again, like he's, he's not so triggered that he's like stuck and in this like emotional, like feedback loop, but like it, it, it like he has, I think enough separation and enough like support around him that he's able to go 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 back in this ship with Mm. resolve um i I, so there there is this uh bit where uh groot and star lord go on the ship to confront the high evolutionary to get rocket back and they get off the ship right as uh nebula and Drax and mantis are coming on the ship to save them so it's this big switch uh and this is when nebula and Jarax find all those kids at the bottom of the ship that they've been experimenting on all that good stuff um and when they start saving the kids as the high evolutionary ship is finally going down they they think they've saved everyone. They're like, all right, that's it. We've gotten every everyone out, and this is when Rocket has his <sighs> moment where he yes. he's in the hallway looking at like this is the hallway that I had to run down. And like he starts to have these yeah. these flashbacks of like this is where I ran. I was in the hangar. I did this. I did that. Um, and yeah, he he still has his key. Uh, he's kept it the entire time and mm. starts opening up all the cages, starts helping all the little raccoons. God, just <gasps> so so emotional to see that he truly is a North American raccoon. Yeah, that, that uh, he's too. denied he, he it because he's never been cage, sure. And the name is right there. It has God, all the love- genus species, all, all yes. that good stuff. And he tr- tries to scoop all the baby raccoon kits up in his arms and he like can't even hold them all so they just scramble all over him and he's just wearing all the raccoons yes there's something so sweet in that image like i'm just going to carry i'm gonna wear all of you out of here yeah yeah um like i like especially with all the animal stuff i knew that my 
partner was kind of mm-hmm. be a, a mess the entire time, time but that that one is like the one that i could hear yeah. hear her like when he that's like, really and, something and he, she d- d- drops that one ah! and he has to like pick it up like i could hear her just just completely sobbing um and i was just like oh this is this is oh, oh. so mm-hmm. yeah um but they they save all the animals too, and there's a, a big stampede of all the animals. Mm. Uh, to to like in in the midst of the, like this emotional yeah. stuff, though, there is that one scene where like the monkey jumps on the the woman who's like trying to save ev- everyone <laughs> yeah. and just completely like destroys her face. Like, w- what is happening? Maybe it's supposed to be maybe a happy that's emotional was, moment. Maybe that's what he was programmed to do. I don't know, but. <laughs> Just didn't like her face. I, I don't know. Right. We Last year we no, watched not, our, not, our not to look in in in, <laughs> in, in their right. eyes. Right. You looked at the monkey. Nope. Taught us all not to do that. Also, last year we watched R R R, which also has a big "I let Great all movie. the animals loose" scene. Yeah. Again, I just think it's funny that in this period in cinema we can see these weird, inexplicable patterns repeating itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what uh, it means. It's just funny. But yeah, so they, they save a, as much as the animals as they can. Rocket has a moment when he's fighting the high evolutionary at the end there when he the high evolutionary calls him by his number and then he finally oh. gets to say his name. He's like, I'm Rocket Raccoon. And yes. starts shooting things. It's like, yeah, Get <laughs> it was good. It was good. Um yeah, man, I yeah, yeah, his his whole story, all of the the the, the stuff of the Google Guardians m- moving on. I I think this is just such an emotional gut punch, but it's also like I I I think despite all of the sadness and the trauma that's in this, I think there is kind of this undertone of joy in in yes. in here i think with the dancing at the end i think with them saving oh. all of the kids i think with drax basically becoming a, fa- a father once again with this mm. new incarnation of the guardians i think with with craglin finally learning how to use the like whistle a- oh, arrow craglin. thing which is also just such a great scene when he when he like yes he feels helpless and then we see him like imagining yondu right there he's like use your heart boy um and and uh, it's just, oh it's yondu. such a, it's such a good moment um uh. and it, yeah like it is this joyful when he finally starts to just whistle that thing around like there there is a sense of joy that is in like it's not he's not like oh, oh I, I did it yes yeah but like you you that, there is this like underswelling of emotion of just like yes, yes he nailed it right right um, you are you know all these characters so well you are so attached to them this movie is so many like yeah get them type moments where you were rooting for like one specific character i, I also yeah. love that him and cosmo like how they play off each other how he like Instead of hitting the bad guy, he just hits like a br- a stone wall and the stone cracks. And that's enough that Cosmo's like telekinesis can like grab it and just straight up sandwich that guy. Yeah. Just, just flat as a layer of peanut butter. Indeed. Indeed. Um, yeah. I'm just like, I, it, man, there, there is this this joyfulness un- underneath yes. it all. And I think. That's kind of how the movie ends, like on this sense of like, it's not sad. It's not a good buy. It is this joyful, like we've 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 overcome these these first main steps. We don't know what's next, but man, we did the thing. And it's just like, yeah, (laughs) this was great. This was so good. Some more tiny little bits I want to mention before we talk about like the music of the thing. But yeah. I have to talk about the music. Of course. Uh, I love that. We, I love that on Nowhere you see Kraglin and, and Cosmo and Howard the Duck and all these characters like sitting around playing, playing poker. Cards, and your dog's yeah. playing poker moment. I love that we see that guy, like the broker character from the first movie who ran that like curio shop on Xandar. I yeah. was so happy to see that guy again. <laughs> like, yeah. I think the series is really good at 
calling back things you want to see again that you didn't know you wanted to see again. I had no idea if that guy even lived past the end of that movie. I He's not on a wish list, but boy, was I happy to see him. <laughs> and one of my favorite jokes that isn't even really a joke is when they're breaking into Orgo Corp and you see Nathan Fillion in his weird, like, bug suit. Uh, Bubble like talking, suit, yeah. Right, talking shop with those those other guards, and he mentions like he got some sort of a technical upgrade to a vehicle or a weapon. I don't even remember what it is. But he rattles off some numbers, and one of his coworkers is like, "Oh yeah, that yeah. thing's cool." And he's like, "That's not real. I just made that up." And the guy's like, "I, I, I thought you said something else." <laughs> but he's so sincere like, about it too. Like, well, right. well in, no. in, in in the, in the moment, like he he yes. he is just like. Uh, uh, Busted. I thought you said something else. But then, yeah. <laughs> later. Continue. It's later when Nathan Fillion is talking. Because I think they're like, oh, Drax is an idiot. You know, <laughs> we got, got, this is a I boss's got nephew. We got stuck with him too. on our team. And he's like, yeah, I got one of them, too. And the guy says, I thought you said something else. Like, <laughs> yes. It's not that. It's when he says, there is a guy on my team I really like. This guy's great. This guy's cool. That guy like doesn't <laughs> react to the compliments. The fact that that guy just stands there and blinks, and like Nathan Fillion likes him so much, but why? What does he do? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just the choice of that guy not reacting is very funny to me. I I I, I liked that one a lot. Um, I I think another moment for me is when Mantis brings up Peter's grand dad that's like hey yeah there's a chance he <laughs> might still be alive and he's like he'd be like 90 and then and she goes right? so and he's like humans live to be like 50 and, and, oh and then she goes oh my god peter are you gonna die and then without <laughs> saying anything jarax is in the back just shaking his head like yep about to happen any any day now old peter yeah. I do like that you like, not still get these moments where you remember Peter has barely been around other humans since he was eight years old. He's been around humanoid right. space creatures like Kraglin's not from Earth. I don't know where he's from. He forgets how humanity works. He's like adults die when they're 50. Right. But how how old is Peter, though? I, I mean, he was born in like 1980. So... It isn't current MCU like slightly oh, ahead of where we are. So he's like true. Yeah, 40 he something, is close to 50. Yeah. 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 He's not far off. So Drax <laughs> isn't wrong by Peter's standards. Right. Now, he's just like, yep. This <laughs> this movie s sets up. it. There's lines like that that le lead you to think this is going to come back later when that character dies. Mm. Like, like mentioning that Peter's like just so old he must be dead soon and like the two times Peter refers to Rocket as his best friend and Drax mutters Sick. second best friend yeah. <laughs> I was expecting there's going to be a third beat of that where Drax dies and Peter's like Drax you are my best friend like I like that the movie set these things up to give you an expectation and then defy it like as we get towards the end of the movie, largely when most look well, when most of the characters like hop off of the spaceship onto the giant floating head of nowhere that they're piloting around like a big floating head, which is incredible. When mm -hmm. everybody else is like hopped off there, you're like, okay, they're out of mortal peril now. And then Peter goes back for the Zune, which is so stupid, but so perfect. So absolutely in line with his character. They're just wordlessly, he's like, I gotta have my Zune. And he gets stuck out there and he's freezing to death. And you think, oh, is this the death that we're getting? But then as soon as his face balloons up, I'm like, OK, he's not dying like this. You would not kill off your protagonist with a big puffy face. You're too sincere for that. I mean, you never know. <laughs> I, what is James G -G Gunn? Like, <laughs> right? I, these movies, there's an there's lots of jokes in them, but I don't know if. They're not irreverent overall. There is a lot of sincerity, a lot of heart to them. I'm like, I know this is not how you were going to take Peter out. I like throughout the movie just the sort of expectation of how the movie almost knowingly kind of prodding you into believing certain things are going to happen and then taking it away at the last moment. 
Like mm-hmm. setting up beat one, beat two, and then never giving you a beat three where you think there's going to be beat three. Mm. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. Speaking of beats, though, Melissa, I know you yes! really want to talk about the yes! music uh, and stuff, which is always a big part of the Guardians yeah. movies. Um, I know James Gunn likes to actually play uh, some of the music like diegetically in the yeah. scenes. It's not just something they put in post. Uh, so music. Tell me about it. Uh, I so I mentioned there was one song that I knew was going to be in this movie outside the mm-hmm. ones that played in the the teasers, like Since You've Been Gone by Rainbow, In the Meantime by Space Hog. I think I did hear that Do You Realize by the Flaming Lips was played in like a, a D23 or Comic-Con exclusive trailer that never got leaked. The one I knew was that the movie was going to end with Come and Get Your Love by Redbone just the way that the first movie in the main timeline, not counting the flashback to Earth, the way the Again, first movie started. Full circle. Yeah. Which I love. I think that's such a smart choice. Uh, and I love that it is Rocket that plays it. And like, we, we don't know if Rocket knows that was one of Peter's favorite songs specifically. Like, Rocket does not know that moment that all of us saw at the beginning of the first movie and echoed right. again in Infinity War. But I think it's so smart that we keep seeing Rocket engage more with music the way Peter does. Like, he's putting songs on. He's kind of humming or singing along to them. They're in that scene where he's looking out at the sky with the high evolutionary, he yes. d- is like, hey, I like the music that you're playing. Like yes. He, he does have an affinity for music, too. Yeah. Um, I like that that comes through in this movie as this sign of uh it, it, you're the next leader the leader mm-hmm. must also must always be a big music head like that that sort of continuity leader will be bestowed I really like. the sacred zoom <laughs> right the sacred zoom but we got a lot more songs in this movie than we usually do i think due to the length of the, the movies like like 20 minutes longer than the previous movies are plus like you can fit more in a zoom than you can on just a mixtape a mixtape is kind of limited to the 12 songs that the previous movies had on their soundtracks. Sure. Yeah. I think the, the needle drops as a whole, we didn't have as many that like hit as hard and felt as like purposeful as they did in the previous movies where it's definitely like, here is the scene. Here is the song. The song's really going to stand out. This movie had more like things just playing in the background, just casually. But when the songs really hit, they hit hard. Yeah. Uh, one of the outstanding ones being the action scene set to No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Great scene. That's Great scene. such a highlight of the movie. This has got way more uh, recent songs. Like I knew based on the songs that were played in like the teasers that we were getting up through the 90s, but I didn't know for sure that we were getting up until the 2000s. Which I guess mm-hmm. makes sense. It includes songs from when Azun existed. Yeah. But that yeah. was a surprise every time they played something recent. And Dog Days Are Over, I could not see coming. But I think it's it works so well in the finale. I like that they play like practically the whole song. Like you see it in all these different contexts. Like you see everybody dancing. You know, you see Peter going back to Earth set to this song. I think that's really lovely. But the one that really surprised me, I don't know if you know this song. It's a song that's playing like as Rocket is like piloting the ship into like the big final battle with the high evolutionary. It's a it's like the accordion song. It's this is the day by the the. This is one of my favorite songs like this is single girl, though I am. This is on my list of my future husband had better agree that we play this at our wedding. It's like that (laughs) level of song. That's important to me. And I, I mentioned to you on the captain's log that I was making my own like fantasy volume three playlist. Cause I didn't let Uh myself look up the actual one right before I went to see the movie. I'm like, this is the last time I'm going to be able to be in the space where I'm guessing at what songs are going to be in the movie. This was on that list. (laughs) That's what I was hoping for. Like, I I, I was yes. in, interested in, like, how much of this would you get right? Or, like, can I, can you get any song that you guessed on the actual thing? Which, yeah, I guess you did. I, you I, nailed I, it. I, 
it was on there for a long time. I swapped it out for something. I swapped it out for an NXS song at the last moment. So I didn't get this 100% right, but it was ah. like really high up there in my consideration. And then two songs I could put on my fantasy playlist were Superstar by the Carpenters and Friends in Low Places by Garth Brooks. Just think <laughs> about spaceships crashing into each other while Friends in Low Places plays. Well, they do scum and villainy, right? I got Friends in Low Places. <laughs> And like those songs aren't in there, but those are artists that are mentioned in the post credit scenes when the new Guardians are going around talking about musicians they like. Carpenters and Garth Brooks do come up. Yeah. So I had I had some hits, uh, I, I guess some of them. So that's right? not bad. I was proud of myself. I'm really excited to listen to this whole soundtrack. Uh, like I'm saving this for my work day tomorrow, coming back to the office after taking the day off. And then I have to catch up on a ton of emails. Like this is going to power me through. Mm -hmm. What did you feel about this soundtrack? Did anything stand out to you? Did you have any favorites? Um, I, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you that like there was a lot more in, in this that I, I, I think played in the back ground or, or, or just like in encapsulated a scene, but nothing truly hit like the come and get your love or the like ooga chaka mm. ooga chaka uh, yeah right like I, I don't think anything hit in that same way but yeah i think that that repeat of the movie ending on the yes. c c c come and get your love was just a fantastic note yes it's so good um because i mean like like you were talking about er earlier this idea of love kind of be being the pervasive yes. thing between all of these groups of people however they decide to sh sh show it um is yeah is a theme that under lines the whole trilogy so to have this song then kind of recontextualized at the end here with that of like yeah hey, come and get your love it's right here right like, yeah here yeah. is the family we're we're starting a new yes. team who wants to join like all all of that that, that that good good stuff um is is like a a not recruitment song that makes it it's, 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 it's an but anthem it's, it's like an, in some yeah, way it's an anthem it's a theme song for the guardians um that i i, I think really really works so mm -hmm. good stuff with that um, yeah, I yeah, and I think it, it thematically makes sense that some of the music doesn't hit quite as hard because in those first two movies, Peter's got these mixtapes from his mom that are the last remnants of her, like some of the last remnants of his entire experience on Earth, and they are so so deeply precious to him. Uh, and especially like the mixtape as a medium, where she's like record those songs off the radio, record them right, off of yeah. KC ninety five, real rock radio here in St. Louis. <laughs> But with a zoo and it's like, yeah, this can fit like 500 songs. You just throw them on, throw them off. Like the more casual relationship with the music, I think at least does reflect the world's more casual relationship with the music and the changing of the technology and the medium. So it, there is like a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do look forward to like. And like I have listened to those first two Guardian soundtracks so much in the interim. So I wonder if that also makes those earlier songs feel so like sacred to me like these sure, huge yeah. monolithic things and as i i go on to listen to this soundtrack more and more maybe it'll do the same for me that the next times i watch the movie i'm like oh yeah i'm always chasing rainbows by alice cooper truly an iconic choice yep indeed um yeah i mean i i i had a blast with this i think the pacing of the movie works really really well um I like I I kind of mentioned that I felt Adam Warlock was maybe the the like extra thing that mm. could have been cut out, but he even then like I don't think it was a bad choice to put him in there or like that was a mistake or like should have been like it it all fit it all worked yeah. well. I think you said this one was the longest of the three, it, um, but even so, it's like two and a half hours, whereas the other ones were like two hours and a couple minutes each you know they, they, they're not long like it. it doesn't yeah. feel like it is a two yeah. and a half hour movie it just keeps moving right along and i think mm -hmm. having those flashbacks 
kind of split up in between all of that stuff really makes for some nice pacing these nice you know constant beats um yeah i i man i i have nothing but great things to say about this it was fantastic i loved it um it's yes. in in a like i i've with the recent marvel stuff since and game i've i've liked most of it but i think i've mm-hmm. I've found a lot more issues with some of the things of of like mm. it was good. I see what they were going for, but maybe that third act didn't hold up or like uh-huh. I like the ingredients, but the plot didn't make sense or yeah. this thing or, or that. Right. I It's it's kind of just such a good feeling to have a Marvel yes. movie again. That's just like, look, I I know you can find things in in here that p- p- probably are a, not a good choice or who knows what that you can mm. critique. But man, it just it was such a solid one that yes. it's just like this is so good and it feels good to have that again. Um so I'm excited to see what James Gunn does with the DC I, stuff down the road. I do I think it's when they're on Counter Earth and you see Adam Warlock like flying across the streets looking at that absolutely made me believe like this is why this guy got hired to direct and not only write superman like i think he's gonna do a great superman emotionally like just the themes of family like where you came from how you honor or defy where you came from based on like what your needs are like serving like helping people but being your own person specifically the midwestern connection (laughs) yeah, <laughs> like I'm I, excited for a very Midwestern Superman <laughs> movie. The Midwestern connection. Uh, uh, like I, I think even this tr- trilogy of movies sets James Gunn up in a weird way to do a good su- Superman. I mean, mm. we don't know what it will be like in the end of the of the day. Right. But like you said, so built on love and themes of family and that is a big thing of Superman, but we know that his Superman's story is also dealing with legacy and where you came from. And that's where this trilogy ended, right? It's this idea of like, hey, the Guardians are still here. There's a new version of the team. We just haven't gotten into all of that yet. And I think that maybe we'll go on to some other creator who wants to deal with them. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But like this almost feels like the stepping stones to James Gunn telling a story about legacy and knowing yeah. what kind of emotional stakes need to go in to that, where the characters have been and where they need to have gone to make a story like that work. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see about all the DC stuff down down mm-hmm. the road but i i thought this was fantastic yeah absolutely fulfilling and absolutely uplifting i am still amazed at the finale this movie was able to pull off with the the weird gut punch of oh my god everybody lived everything's fine yeah um yeah that was wild i think the only other like easter egg thing that i kind of want to mention is this young girl on the new yes. guardians team she was one of the girls that was in the high evolutionaries uh pr- prison ship job right? job um yeah and uh, she so i i think she was credited was she credited as this do you know i um, i don't rem- I, i'll i'm going to see it again <laughs> Okay, I I, th- I think the new Rockstars video said she was credited yes. as this, and that's why we know it's this character. But uh, her character is Phyla Vell, uh, who is the daughter of Marvel. Um, mm-hmm. So, which we we've seen Marvel in the Captain Marvel movie. Um, she ends up, or Phyla Vell at one point does end up t- taking on the Captain Marvel name, but not mm. in a, not not in a relation to Carol, but more to mm. um, Marvel. Uh, but she ends yeah. up becoming Quasar, uh, who is also yeah. a v- very well known member of the Guardians. Um, which I, I again, I don't know much about her. I don't know much about uh, 
like Marvel cosmic stuff in mm. general. Um, but I, I, I think to me, what's interesting is m- it's Marvel's recent trend of including younger characters. Yes. Um, be between her, between uh, Thor's daughter now yeah. that's in 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 there i think he, he kamala khan is a little older i i know she's mm. older in real life but I, yeah these like preteen characters yes yeah I, I i know even in some of the marvel shows that has been on disney plus we've kind of been speculating this like young avengers team up mm. as we've started yeah. to see some of these characters even if they aren't like mentioned by name it's like yeah, here's this guy's son, which means you are this in the comics. Yes. So I don't know yes. what's happening here. Right. Um, but I, I, I think that is. I, 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 I think that is a way to kind of recoup. Uh, not, not not recoup. I don't know if that's the right word, but just just to kind of continue this cycle, yeah. this, this juggernaut that is the MCU. Right. To keep it good, good, good going. They need to bring new actors in and they need yeah. to bring some f- 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 fresh life like i think even the actor that plays adam warlock is young enough that we could see him yeah. for a long time like yes rocket and groot are cgi so yeah they can be in there for a long time right uh like it, there's 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 not yeah like i i i I like that trend. I think it is helping in the long run that they are more willing to include younger actors instead yeah. of being like, here's three people named Chris and they're all in their 30s or older. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we've gotten so many possibilities that it's almost like we could have two sets of young Avengers. We've got like a a 16 to 24 and then we've got like a younger set. <laughs> I mean, there there is like like a a a a team in Marvel called the Champions, which are younger mm. he- heroes. They're more akin to the Teen Titans, in my opinion. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, like I I could see e- even something like that, where yeah, there are new new t- t- teams that are starting to form down the road, and maybe we haven't seen those connections be made yet. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Mm. So yeah, good movie, good stuff. Good. I, yeah, I had a blast. I had a blast. In, five out of indeed. five. Yeah. Um, do you have any other kind of last minute final stuff that you want to add on to this? I don't think so. I'm probably going to see the movie again next weekend. We're going to go to St. Charles and go to a Dairy Queen. Which echoes that scene in the second film. Also, that's what we did after we saw the first movie back in 2014 Perfect. <laughs> to Perfect. a Dairy Queen. We're, uh, uh, Jack and I arrange our movie going experiences the way a film itself echoes its own themes and character journeys. We're like, we got to go to that restaurant again <laughs> for continuity. You need to b- b- buy some Magic Spoon cereal and listen to the sound. I, near, I nearly <laughs> did. I saw some at Target yesterday. If it wasn't nine dollars a box, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's so it's so expensive. Uh, but it's blessed by a wizard, so right, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe worth it. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, well, cool. I think that is our our spoiler cast on Guardians of the G- Galaxy Volume Three. This was a great one. I'm excited to see what the yes. MCU does down the road. Yeah. Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. There you go. Uh, if you guys want to find me, I'm at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter. And if you would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So please go like, share, and subscribe. You guys know the deal with all of that. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we got a bunch more videos for you to ch- check out. Some are right over there on that so- side of the screen. That would help us out a ton. Um, but yeah, this has been number 115, The Whatnots Reactor Core. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.